complication of stairs and faculty. I just, you know, who, know, who knew? <laughs> Welcome to the 2021 fall commencement. Will you please remain standing and gentlemen, please join me in removing our caps for prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for everything that you have done for us and everything that you will continue to do for us to make us a disciple of yours and to make us go out and uh, bless the world for your glory. We are so thankful for today that you have brought us together. What a milestone it is. For some, it might be the last couple of years of our journey, especially in the graduate program. And for some, in undergraduate programs, what the, it might be a longer journey. It's not just what the, our academic achievements that we are proud of, but it's also the spiritual growth that we're celebrating, which is made possible because of the sacrifices of families, parents, spouse, and all the professors, faculty, staff, administrators at Spring Harbor University, which we call home, the last part of our journey that we are celebrating today. And Father, we uh, want your name to be honored first and foremost. As we are reflecting on uh, this part of our journey, we uh, could not help but uh, thinking of our loved ones who uh, made possible for us to be here. And some of those were not with us. And we just do ask God somehow you would uh, allow them to have a peek of the joy that we are having today. We do pray that you would uh, help us remember why we uh, were given the opportunity to be here um, at Spring Harbor University and uh, help us to be critical participants of the contemporary world, whichever directions we are going, with our uh, degrees, with our education, with our newfound passion to bless your name. Be with us today, God, and that we want you that to be the, in our midst. We know that you celebrate us as much as we celebrate ourselves, and that we give you all the glory and honor. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Dr. Chan. At this time, I want to recognize uh, the members of the University Board of Trustees, vice presidents, deans, and faculty that are present with us today. And so if you all would please stand and be recognized. And on behalf of the Spring Arbor University Board of Trustees, administration, faculty, and staff, it's indeed my honor and pleasure to welcome you graduates of this commencement, fall 2021, and welcome to your friends and family, those that have, have allowed you to be so successful in the midst of this. Uh, this is a culmination uh, of years of hard work, of dedication, of sacrifice, of commitment, um, and particularly with the additional challenges of the COVID pandemic on, layered on top of all of the other requirements, uh, this is a significant achievement. And I want you to know that we're proud of you and we're honored today uh, to uh, bestow upon you uh, your degrees. Congratulations to each of you. Uh, but I want you to know that while this is a culmination, we don't see this from a university perspective, from your alma mater, we don't see this as a conclusion. Right? We see this for you as the beginning of an opportunity for you to invest what you've learned, the excellence within your profession, within your degree program, and the grounding that you have in your faith in Christ 
to be sent from here as ambassadors of the wonderful news of Jesus Christ. Think about this statement. Paul, Paul writes this. He says, that God was not counting humanity's sins against them any longer. And he says that you have been given that, that message of redemption and reconciliation to go into the world as an ambassador. And so as we confer these degrees upon you today, we do so in a manner and a way where we know that we are sending you out prepared in your profession, hopefully grounded in your faith to impact society and culture in profound, systemic, and sustainable ways. So we are extremely proud of you. Congratulations to each one of you. Uh, we have a special uh, honor today. We have the, an opportunity to hear from a couple of our students. Um, our special music will be performed by Brees Hammond. She's a senior music English major. Uh, and in fact, uh, composed this. You, can come, you guys can come on up. Composed this piece. So as you listen to it, think about the, the unique giftedness of Brees in, in composing this piece, um, accompanied by John Kapler, a sophomore music major. And so welcome uh, both um, Brees and John. Thank you, John and Brees. 
beautiful, beautiful song. And I mentioned already, she wrote that and composed that on her own. What a, an amazing gift. Thank you for sharing that with us. We also have a special honor today. One of the thoughts that we had in selecting this particular speaker uh, was that few individuals um, would understand what we have faced as a society and a culture through this COVID pandemic more so than an administrator at a hospital. And with the, also the knowledge of the number of nurses that we have graduating this year, um, the opportunity for us to, to hear and to understand from a, a, a person who uh, has a deep faith in Christ uh, and applied to that in a manner and a way where he, uh, he um, offers that and lives that out in leading and guiding a health system. It's a wonderful opportunity for us. and so. Uh, Jeremiah J.J. Hodshire is president and CEO of the Hillsdale Hospital. He co-hosts a Rural Health Rising, a weekly podcast about the health care triumphs, challenges, and opportunities facing, in particular, rural America. He joined Hillsdale in 2010, serving in a variety of roles until he took the helm as president and CEO in June of 2020, right in the midst of this COVID pandemic. J.J. served in many public and private leadership capacities during his career. He was an administrator and chairman of the board of New Hope Christian School, a private Christian school serving grades K through 12. And then in 1999, he was appointed as Hillsdale County's undersheriff, which is the chief law enfor enforcement executive in Hillsdale County. Uh, he holds a Bachelor of, of Arts degree in political economy from Hillsdale College, a Master of Science in organizational leadership and administration from Concordia University and is also a certified manager from the Institute of Certified Professional Managers. Along with that, he's an ordained minister and a frequent speaker at churches across the tri-state area. So would you please join me in welcoming our 2021 commencement speaker, J.J. Hodshire. Dr. Ellis, Chairman Stevenson, board members, faculty, family, friends, and most importantly, graduates, I express my deep honor and gratitude to participate in the commencement exercises today. I'm even more blessed whenever possible to travel with my bride, and she is joining me today, a graduate herself of Spring Arbor University degree in nursing, who is joining me today. Tressa, thank you for your uh, participation today and your encouragement over the years. Now, I have been very close to Spring Arbor University over several decades, and I have long admired the work of this great university, whose mission is to educate men and women for Christ. Shine brighter at ASU, and let your light shine is the motto but that which an observer on this campus can see lived out each and every day. Now I will submit to you, graduates, that you soon shall forget most of today's ceremony. You will begin your lives, you will begin your careers and your jobs, and you will prepare for a very bright future. But for a very brief moment in time, I ask that you pause, that you open your hearts and that you take the charge that I am going to present to you today. You see, I speak not to your family, to your faculty, to your friends, but to you directly. I wish to encourage you from my perspective to pursue the grand purpose for which God has chosen in your lives from this day forward. We often hear at times of celebration and even at funerals the scripture that is written. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. A very special time, a very special day, and a very special hour has arrived here for an important season in your life. I am more than convinced 
that God will use you for his divine purpose. As Dr. Ellis stated, it has been an unusual year. In fact, it has been a most difficult year, and most of us are navigating our lives in this pandemic-riddled world, which is chaotic, unforgiving, and devastating. You have studied under conditions none of us would ever imagine. Remarkably, you have overcome with perseverance and with an immovable fortitude to pursue your passions of higher learning, you achieved greatness. During the same period, we have witnessed a great divide in our communities, some within our own households, and definitely within this great country. Your education has prepared you for many things and many challenges. And these recent ones, you can stand to testify that it tried every ounce of your patience, but you overcame. We are a nation most interested in drawing attention to ourselves, to our feelings, and at times seeking only what we think is best only for us to be better served. Recently, we have ventured away from handshakes and embraces only to make sporadic eye contact through our mask that lie beneath. The pandemic has brought us many things, mostly bad. And among these, individuals are living secluded, withdrawn, and without others. And this is dangerous. We must rebuild our communities. We live in an age of cancel culture, aimed at silencing the truth and attacking the practice of our constitutional and God-given rights. We live in a day of revisionist history that is dangerously occurring in our classrooms. Even more concerning, we are a nation in moral and civil crisis where there appears to be no wrong, and we are headed through merely existing with no conscience. We are even afraid to stop and help someone along the way in fear of our own great danger. Goodness seems hard to find. Around us are signs of moral and spiritual and societal decay at times. Terrorism, homicides, rising gas prices, economic shortfalls, declining family values, and the transfer of trillions of dollars of unnecessary debt in the pursuit of socialism. Such challenges are weighted on the shoulder of each and every one of you graduates. Soon, you shall leave this ceremony, and my hope and my fervent prayer is that it will be a steadfast desire in your hearts to do something kind, to do something noble and great, as someone out there needs you. You must be a voice for the voice less. And you must be spreading the good news, which you've learned here at Spring Arbor University, and allow your light to shine bright in a dark, dangerous, and at times evil world. The light which shines so bright has been made possible through your dedication and your commitment to pursuing truth, attending chapel, studying the Bible, and listening to exceptional and gifted preaching of leaders like Dr. Ellis. And I often quib that between Dr. Arne and Dr. Ellis, Dr. Arne at a college not too far from here at Hillsdale, Dr. Ellis, you're a much better preacher. I had an opportunity to listen to several of your YouTube videos, and I want you to know how sincerely blessed our community is to have a leader like Dr. Ellis, a man of remarkable character. And he sets a light that is so important for this university. There is no better time than today for there is no better cause than for liberty and freedom for each of you to stand and to make a choice this day to commit yourselves to become the problem solvers of this world and the bearers of light. Matthew 5.16 tells us, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You see, you just can't think about it. You must do it. It's a call to action right where you are seated right now at this place. And it carries a long tradition of those who have forged ahead and a pathway for you, both biblically and historically. 
from the signers of the Declaration of Independence to the framers of the U.S. Constitution, the key elements woven into each of these sacred documents was the principle of local community. It was the local community which promoted order, discipline, and stability within society. It was a local community which garnered the pride of each of its members by fostering and rewarding hard work ethics and loyalty. Not government programs, state-sponsored media, or socialized medicine. And it was a local community which brought its members back into a humbling relationship of a common brotherhood and basic understanding that we all must live together in harmony. We must reject racism and bigotry. We must rise above these things, and you're the generation. You are the graduates that can carry that message forward, for it must stop. Today, we must rise above the lies that have been spewed from the mouths of those who reward laziness, rebuke those who punish hard work, and reject those dangerous concepts of anything goes. Now, it is imperative that as a people, we regain the stability back in our young nation, which begins with each of you individually and multiplied in each of our communities. As a united class, you must stand fervently against the adversaries of materialism, idolism, and laziness. You must stand firm on the foundation and the principles which this nation and your faith were founded upon and that which you have been taught here at this great university. Simple tenets that you must respect each other's property, allowing pursuit of happiness, and above all, placing a value upon humanity and the precious gift of life, which is the foundation of all of our freedoms. Recent violence across this country, and even here in our own state of Michigan, have in a moment's time caused lives to be devastated and homes wrecked. In the midst of all of this, our nation is calling on young men and women to stand in the gap and to have a positive influence in the policy of our local communities, in our state, and in this great nation. Understand, it is not the position or the title that you are about to assume in your life that creates the person who you are. For you have been created with a purpose far greater than that single title. You are the embodiment of Christ's love, and that must be present in your work each and every day, and the homes you are about to assume, and the workplaces that you're about to lead. So, pretty encouraging subject matter, right? Well, here's what I firmly believe. It's the bad news that makes the good news really good. And we have to accept the bad news. Now we have to change it. I have to tell you, while I have witnessed the worst in humanity in my career, I have to tell you that I have witnessed some of the best in humanity. Walking down the hospital hallways each day, watching caregivers help and heal the sick, minister to those in need, and lean on individuals who just simply need a kind word, to have a shoulder present for a dying patient's family, it's the story so often not told. In the midst of all of this bad news, we hear very small glimpses of positivity, but it's happening here all around us. Now, many of you here today are graduating with a nursing degree, and the opportunity to serve in this capacity will be endless. Yes, you will grow tired. I have seen the faces of my nursing staff and of my clinicians who are working 20-hour days to save lives, and it is tiring. You will grow tired, but you will sense a deep sense of responsibility to practice your skills and to take care of the sickest among us. Consider George Washington when we think about the word responsibility. The thing he wanted most from life was to be at his beloved Mount Vernon. He said, I would rather be there than with all of the kings of Europe. During the revolution, he was constantly writing letters to ask how the crops in the South Field were doing and how the trees in the orchard were blooming. 
Mount Vernon was where his heart was. He wanted to be there in a bad way. But because of his deep sense of responsibility, he went elsewhere. Years after year, he would serve as commander-in-chief of the Revolutionary Forces, the president of the Continental Congress, and the first president of the country. He gave up what he wanted most to serve the cause of freedom responsibly. In your lives, you will grow tired, but you cannot give up. Some of you will feel as if you cannot give any more from this moment, that the college life has burnt you out, but there is plenty more opportunity that awaits your service. I challenge you that success is always within the reach of each and every one of you every day. It's here today and will be with you until you take your final breath. It requires you to expect more out of yourself than you think ever possible, to push harder than you have ever pushed, and to reach for new potential personal and professional heights in your life. However, in order to be successful, you must possess a trait of leadership because without it, you'll have limited effectiveness in your future endeavors. Leadership does not mean commanding thousands of people under your watch, having a large sphere of influence as politicians do. The leadership I speak of requires you to be a servant first, and then leadership happens. Isaiah 6 describes it best, how the, how the prophet Isaiah thought and received through a vision from the Lord how to begin his ministry. In the vision, the Lord asked, whom shall I send and whom will go for us? Isaiah's response was to volunteer for service. Here am I, send me. This is total surrender. We need to be set on fire to change our homes, our community, our state, and our country for the cause of Christ, for the virtue and the good things. And it starts with your surrender this morning. Now I'm almost done, but I want you to know that your impact is only a fraction of what it could be until you demonstrate moral servant leadership. It comes from being humble and serving others. Not to be served, helping someone who is hurting today, someone who needs a hand up, not a hand out. Teaching a Sunday school class, youth group, or volunteer to delivering meals now that school has ended. I'm gonna give you a challenge. As you have now made the transition from class to work and life and home, I'm going to challenge you to keep the same schedule for six months that you had here in college. And in those places where you had classes, spend time helping someone on life's most difficult journey. Will you spend an hour or two a day ministering to the sick, the hungry? Or will it be more about you, what you can achieve? That is not greatness. That's not servant leadership. You see, the greater impact that you want to make in life, marriage, parenting, the workforce, the greater your positive moral influence must be extended into each of these critical eras. And you must be a servant first. Now, after nearly 47 years on this journey, I have come to understand and will assure you that your true influence will not be based on the number of cars that you own, the mansion that you live in, or all of the toys that you could ever accumulate in a lifetime. Rather, it's contingent on principled character and value-based decision-making, centered in an understanding that there is something greater than us. It is a knowledge that each of you possess from this place, Spring Arbor University. We say it with pride in knowing what is noble, what is great, and what is virtuous continue throughout your careers and life to always pursue truth. I challenge you as you move from this great institution that you keep a strong faith and a firm grip on two things. The person of God, for he will never forsake us, and the promise of God, which will guide us through every aspect of our life. Regardless of your season of life today, Regardless of where you find yourself, traditional, 
non-traditional student, wherever you find yourself, God has placed you here for a specific purpose. You can do great and mighty things. Winston Churchill had nearly reached the height of his political power by a young age of 33. A cabinet minister, nation's most powerful speaker. Yet a series of events and unpopular stances that he took allowed Churchill to lose his position and to even be mocked. By the 1930s, he had been excluded from all the seats of power. His warning about Hitler were ignored by those who wanted to hear comforting words, happiness, words of peace, not reality. How familiar does that sound today? But when Britain was plunged into World War II, Churchill was at 65 years of age, probably in a season of his life that he would never imagine that he could be used for service. Eligible to retire with a decent pension from the government, he took the call. Yet that is the moment when the nation needed him the most. And they turned to Churchill, became the prime minister, who inspired the British people to remain firm in their darkest days of a war. You see, each new day, each new week, each new year lies before us like an open book. Regardless of what our childhood has brought us, what we're facing right now, and no matter what season of life you find yourself, you cannot let these temporary situations stand in the way of the great plan that the mighty purpose for which God has created you for the future. Much like Esther, for such a time as this, in your homes, in your community, in your state, and in this great nation, God has brought you to this place as a special and chosen person to make a difference. Thomas Merton said, every moment and every event of every man's life on earth plants something in his soul. Many precious moments have been spent here preparing you for what you soon shall face out there, and your soul has been richly blessed. Now, I personally know the pains of hunger, having grown up poor. I know desperation, and I certainly know despair. I will challenge you today to rise from your circumstances and rejoice in what God has provided. To whom much is given, much is required. You have been given an amazing education, and you are required to give back. No more sitting down. We must forge ahead. Whatever gifts you have been given, you will be required to make a positive impact in this world. Mother Teresa said, help one person at a time, and always start with the person nearest to you. For those nurses who are soon to be pinned, and in a time that we call the great resignation, in a time and when we need nurses, I'll pay you $5 extra an hour, okay? Just come see me afterwards. You're going to be faced with some significant challenges that we have never faced before. Healthcare workers have left the hospital a year and a half ago living in camp, uh, campsites, tents, in their garages. True story. Across the United States. We've gone from clapping for them in hospitals, to slowly turning our back around them, mandating certain things, and if they don't comply, you get fired. A terrible time in healthcare. We must be true to those heroes, those saving lives every day in our hospital beds across America. And you soon shall be in that class. And it's an honorable and it's a noble profession. So. As the weight of all of these things fall on your shoulder, remember, you are blessed beyond measure. You've been chosen for this specific time in our country to rise up. And I give you that charge today. May the light shine so bright in this generation. May you engage with a servant's heart as a leader, a teacher, a pastor, a nurse, a doctor, father, mother, whatever it is, a worker, from this place forward. I'm going to leave it with this. Love more. Pray often. Forgive always. And be kind. From personal experience, when we do those things, they shall be added back unto you tenfold in your life's journey. 
May God bless each of you individually. May God bless Spring Arbor University for the amazing job they are doing to prepare people for this challenge. And may God bless America because of you. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. Um, at Spring Arbor, we call that critical participation in the contemporary world. It's the focus of what we do for our students to prepare you to go and impact our world for Christ and for his kingdom. At this point in time, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Carol Green forward, and we will prepare to provide and bestow upon the class of 2021 the rights and privileges of their degree. President Ellis, on behalf of the faculty, it is my pleasure to present these students who qualify for graduation with their respective degrees. The faculty and the Board of Trustees have approved that each of these students, upon verification of the completion of all requirements, be awarded the appropriate academic degree. Will all of the candidates for graduation please stand? By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Spring Arbor University and under the laws of this great state of Michigan, I confer upon you the appropriate degree with all the rights, privileges, and obligations pertaining thereto. For graduates receiving your bachelor's degree, you may now move your tassel from the right to the left. Now graduates, if you'll be seated, faculty marshals will come and lead you row by row to the platform. We will now present individually the members of the graduating class to receive their respective degrees. Specific honors earned by undergraduate students will be read aloud and are listed in the graduation program. We begin with those that have earned a master's degree, graduating from the Ganey School of Business with a Master of Arts in Management and Organizational Leadership, Jeffrey J. O'Brien. With a Master of Business Administration, With a Master of Business Administration, Callie J. Ackerman. Janita M. Davis. Brandon D. Gilliard. Jennifer K. Pope. Nicholas P. Ranville. <laughs> Vanessa N. Ubi.
Ashley Rodriguez Floyd. Graduating from the School of Communications, Media, and Fine Arts with a Master of Arts in Strategic Communication and Leadership, Katie M. Kratzer. Graduating from the School of Education with a Master of Arts in Early Childhood, Meredith R. McCoy. With a Master of Arts in Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages, Marley M. Neal. Kara M. Slater. With a Master of Special Education, Nicole M. Stabler. Harry A. Strong. Graduating from the School of Nursing and Health Sciences with a Master of Science in Nursing, Barbara J. Beatty. Jervin L. Brown. Lindsay N. Erickson. Angela D. Ford. Cassandra A. Genhart. Mira Hermina Gurgis. Rachel M. Heschelschwert. Cindy E. Hockman. Elizabeth K. Holdenberg. Tracy L. Horobin.
Rebecca L. Hoyt. Faith L. Jurgis. Rebecca L. Taubflesch. Natasha M. Parrish. Ramya Manoj Kumar. Alyssa N. Martin. Stephanie L. McCarthy. Priscilla A. Nampira Sensamba. Anna N. Oberst. Danielle M. Orsello. Amy J. Euler. Eliza Parado. Rebecca L. Williams. Sandra J. Richardson. Rosa M. Rodriguez. Sierra L. Schaller Mall. Stacy L. Sharp. JC M. Stoudinger. Hannah. 
Candace N. Stevens. Courtney A. Telfer. Megan M. Watson. Rebecca M. Wire. With a Master of Science in Nursing and Master of Business Administration, Tara B. Adams. Aisha M. Davis. Skyler R. Watson. Graduating from the School of Social Sciences with a Master of Social Work, Amoni C. Brown. Caitlin E. Burbridge. Marissa A. Bush. Jody L. Chapius. Casey J. Dixon. Sherry A. Easterling. <laughs> Kayla A. Barlow. Brandon M. Fox. Nicole M. Bundenbergs. Patty L. Hall. Henry B. Hicks.
Cecil L. Holston II. Tracy L. Irons. Nicole A. Jeffries. Kiera N. Johnson. Leah R. Jokestock. Ashley E. King. Laverna N. King Brown. Brian J. Kenyon. Jessica J. Light. Aubrey J. Major. Leanne M. Mann. Roslyn R. Mann. Sierra E. Miller. Emily E. Monroe. Samantha N. Nelson. Christine I. Peterson. Joyce A. Plumstead. Debra A. Potter. We love you too. Yeah. 
Courtney J. Richterink. Anissa C.J. Rogers. Destiny R. Ruckner. Charman L. Russ. Melinda A. Saldana. Kenyatta M. Shepard. Laura S. Smith. Sonia D. Smith. Body M. Suri. Albra A. Tap. Lashanda A. Thomas. Jerry L. Turner Williams. Nia M. Tyler. Anthony F. Begian. Vanessa N. Wallace. Amy N. Williams. Matthew D. Winner. Nicole M. Wright. <laughs> Alex.
Alan T. Zenz. Karen M. Suget. Jason Obitz. Rebecca J. Smith. Arely uh, L. Aranjo. Janine Orgert. Sarita M. Robinson. Lakeisha M. Wash. <laughs> now those graduating with a bachelor's degree, graduating from the Ganey School of Business with a business major, Kayla E. Piercy. With a business administration major, Rebecca S. Cotton, summa cum laude. Emily H. Honstein, magna cum laude. Ebony G. Schmidt, summa cum laude. With a marketing major, Lutrim Shevku. With an organizational management major, Nicole L. Bell. Jessica D. Rutzman, summa cum laude. Kaylin R. Hewson. Chizio P. Kurtz. With an international business major, Scott Heyman. Graduating from the School of Communication, Media, and Fine Arts with an art major, Laura A. Ruger. Christopher M. McCain. Tabitha L. Sterner, magna cum laude. With a digital media major, Seth D. Gorbett, summa cum laude.
graduating from the School of Education with an early childhood education major, Abigail M. Burgick, cum laude. <laughs> with an elementary education major, Michaela L. Holmquist. Graduating from the School of Ed Engineering with a physics mathematics major, Seth M. Phelps. Graduating from the School of Humanities with an English secondary education major, Anna K. Bobo, magna cum laude. Hey. With an English major, Carolyn A. Geyer, magna cum laude. With a youth ministry major, Madison L. Valentine. <laughs> Graduating from the School of Social Sciences with a family life education major, Michelle F. Campo, magna cum laude. Carmen M. Massey. With a psychology major, Jaden M. S. Cuff. Oh. Austin Hickerson. With a philosophy major, Andrew O'Doherty. With a social work major, Sheila D. Allen. Kaya D. Collins. Doreen N. Davis. Angela C. Dorner. Michael Hart, Jr., cum dignitate. Maya S. Jones, cum dignitate. Sikora P. Jones, magna cum laude. Kimberly A. Lemke, summa cum laude. J.C. M. Miller, cum dignitate. Sarah E. Moss. Madison M. Powley. Taylor A. Peel. Taylor S. Peter, cum laude. Lindsay M. Simon, cum dignitate. Adriana F. Wagner. Valerie K. Walker. Patricia A. Weathers, cum laude. Mackenzie F. Weaver, cum dignitate.
Greetings, my name is Brian Knapp, Director of Alumni Relations, Class of 2010, fall uh, graduate as well. On behalf of the Alumni Office, the Alumni Board, and the thousands of alumni who have crossed this stage before you, congratulations on your achievements. For many of you, it's official. You are now alumni of Spring Arbor University, and I know for some this is the continuation of a second degree. So again, congratulations on this accomplishment. Now, as President Ellis mentioned, this is not the conclusion of your relationship with Spring Arbor University. As graduates, you are stakeholders of this great institution. And as stakeholders, we want you to know that your faculty, staff, and the countless alumni in the communities that you'll be headed into are here to continue to walk alongside you as you are critical participants in this contemporary world. And as stakeholders, our hope is that as you go out and as you make the same impact as generations before you have, that you would come back and continue to partner with us in the great work and pouring in to future Spring Arbor University students. There's two truths I want to conclude with you today. Leaving here with a Spring Arbor University degree means that you have become educated to be excellent practitioners in what you are about to do. But most importantly, it means that you have spent time being poured into to being kingdom ambassadors for Christ, to be world changers, to be life changers, to be great parents, to be great community members, to be great husbands and wives and friends. So congratulations on what you have earned to go out and be successful in your careers, but congratulations for doing that in a manner in which you will honor God and his kingdom. So once again, congratulations. Don't be nervous, that's just the air conditioning unit kicking on. That's all that is. <laughs> we need to keep the fans blowing on commencement days, don't we? That can, uh, that can jump your, jump start your heart there. So. Congratulations, class of 2021. We are so proud of you. And I know today you have friends and family, you have individuals that have invested like this sweet little girl here. Find those that you love, turn around, tell them thank you. Stand up, look around, tell them thank you. So we are going to have a benediction. We're going to have a benediction. And after the benediction, we are going to proceed immediately with the recessional. So here's how it's going to work. Graduates, faculty, and other participants are going to recess down the center aisle. Guests, when the recessional begins, please continue to be seated so that everyone can see and can remain seated until all the graduates and faculty are out of the guest area. And then you can meet your graduate. She can come with you. <laughs> but you can meet then your graduate in Dunkel Gym uh, where they checked in. And so the benediction will be uh, led by Dr. Carol Green, our Vice President of Academic Affairs. And so if you would, please stand and gentlemen, remove your caps for prayer. Bow with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, this day of celebration. I thank you for every graduate here, Lord, for every family here who supported them. Thank you for the energy and the stamina and all of the different ways that you have helped them through this. Lord, I play, pray a, a great blessing on them moving forward. I pray that, that you would just bless them in a mighty, powerful way to be the people that you have them to be. Help them to go into their jobs and their communities and all of their other areas of influence and do amazing, incredible work for you 
and for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.